Hello, fellow HubSpotters. This is Emma with Kiwi Creative, and today we're talking about data migration. No matter the size or scope of your migration, there are certain best practices and tips to ensure that it goes off without a hitch. If you are indeed migrating your data into HubSpot, this video pertains to all hubs and tiers, so listen up. Also, I'm going to be using and referring to our migration mapping matrix and import template during this video. You can download yours below. There are a few things to consider when you take on a data migration project. Data migration is actually just a piece of a holistic, successful CRM implementation. Regardless of the size or the method of your migration, doing a lot of this legwork before you move the data is the key to success. Neglecting to follow the best practices can wreak havoc on your otherwise perfect implementation by dumping a ton of dirty data into your new portal. There are a couple different migration methods, each come with pros and cons. The first is connecting your existing platform with HubSpot via API. APIs are great for a quick and seamless data migration, but it does require someone with developer knowledge to write the API code. Some platforms, on the other hand, can integrate with the native HubSpot app found in the marketplace, which means data transfers easy and doesn't require any code. But not all platforms have an app, and some don't migrate custom fields unless you pay for a subscription or have Ops Hub. The final method, which is the most popular and we'll be focusing on today, is the good old fashioned manual import via CSV. This allows admins to control what data they're exporting from the current tool and then cleanse and prep the data prior to import into HubSpot. This option doesn't require code or additional costs but it absolutely can be more time intensive. There are four steps to the manual migration, completing the migration mapping matrix, making the necessary customizations and creating the necessary fields in HubSpot, updating the CSV file based on the import template, and then importing. While you probably don't need any help exporting your data, allow me to provide some guidance on what comes after the cleanup pro tip before making any changes to your exported file save a backup of it so you always have a reference point of the original data there are a couple things to remember before you get to the fun part of importing your csv so let's take a look talk a little bit about the data hygiene items we need to consider before executing this project uh, if you take a look at your exported CSV, this is an uh, uh, export from our demo portal, you'll notice that um, not everything needs to be imported and migrated to your new portal. For example, system data from your old tools, things like the uh, record ID number from your old tool is not going to be helpful in HubSpot. Uh, what the contacts ID number was in Pardot or Marketo, for example, has no bearing on the new auto-generated record ID that HubSpot will assign. Best practice, delete these bad boys. Uh, no reason to import data that won't make sense in your new system. And remember, you've already made a backup of your CSV, so no worries. Um, other things to consider, bad data from your old tool. Maybe there's unused fields, maybe super old data. We can see that a lot of this is from 2020, for example. This won't magically be fixed when you're imported into your new CRM. You know the saying, garbage in, garbage out. Best practice, again, hit that delete button. Don't waste time creating HubSpot fields for things that you didn't even bother capturing in your old CRM. Also, use this time to review the exported data for patterns that could translate single line text fields into drop downs instead. For example, if you keep seeing the same five or six reasons a deal was lost, homogenize those values and update HubSpot's closed loss reason field to a dropdown to better accommodate. Another thing to consider, your custom property uh, that you've created in your external platform. So although HubSpot comes with hundreds of standard fields, I can dang near guarantee that your organization will require at least a couple of custom fields to correctly capture your incoming data. So best practice, in addition to updating the default HubSpot fields to better accommodate your data, spend the time understanding what other data points already exist 
If you are already capturing custom properties in your old tool, they'll need to be created when you migrate over to HubSpot. In addition to your data hygiene considerations, there are a couple of system items we'll need to consider as well. Users being number one. Are you importing data owned by deactivated users or users that only exist in that other platform? Reassign those records before migrating. Reassign the contacts and companies and deals that were owned by old users and or create the appropriate new users in HubSpot to catch the records upon import. Keep in mind, are they view only, core, or paid seats? If you've already have lead scoring set up in HubSpot, this is another area to consider prior to your data migration. Remember that any and all contacts will automatically be scored as soon as they up enter your HubSpot portal. Best practice is to consider whether your migrated data influences your scoring attributes. Maybe you captured region or service type in your old platform, and those fields influence your ideal customer profile. Should your HubSpot score be updated to accommodate? Similarly to lead scoring, your published workflows will also continue to run when you migrate your data, which means if any of those records meet the workflow trigger criteria, they're going to get enrolled whether you like it or not. Best practice, review your published workflows. Double check these triggers that would auto enroll new contacts. Update them accordingly. Now that we've done some housekeeping, let's take a look at our migration mapping matrix that's linked below and walk through how to use it to get the most bang for your buck. Note that not all of these tabs will make sense specifically for your organization. If you're not migrating certain objects, if you are enterprise and you have a custom object, you'll need to adjust accordingly. Our first tab is users, which is important to wrap your head around as we talked about a moment ago. Who will be your HubSpot users? What should their seat be? What should their permissions allow them to do? Should they be on a specific team? You may already have this rocket and rolling in your portal, but I often find that companies don't have any documentation supporting what users should be where and get what. So feel free to use this as a little bit of a gut check. Additionally, this sort of documentation is really helpful when on or offboarding employees. If we take a look at contacts, companies, deals, and tickets, you'll notice in row one of every single tab, there is a link to the default HubSpot fields. This list that we're looking at currently does not include those read only fields like create date, like record ID, because those things we don't necessarily want to import. You'll see that columns C, E, and G indicate the label or the externally facing name, the internal name, and the property type for the standard HubSpot fields. If you're importing a CSV, you won't really need the internal name of your old tool in column F, but this will be important if you're using an API. Do pay attention, however, to the property type in columns G and H. The types, and at very least the values that populate those types, have to perfectly match between HubSpot and the platform you're migrating from. If your lifecycle stage values, for example, are lead, qualified and customer in HubSpot, the data you're importing must also be identical, lead, qualified, and customer. Otherwise, you'll get an error upon import. Notice that columns D, F, and H are generic, so feel free to replace the double X with the name of the tool you're migrating from. Work through the properties you wish to migrate from your current CRM and match them up as you can with default HubSpot properties. First name, last name, job title, pretty dang easy to match up. However, maybe life cycle stage is called lead stage or something different. Maybe there is no marketing contact status in your old tool and you'll need to denote, uh, yes, we want to email them or no, we don't. If you have a field that doesn't exist in HubSpot, make sure to note in column I that it needs to be created prior. So if you're capturing dog's name, uh, hair color, favorite baseball team. Um, you'll need to create those obviously prior to migrating. So deals and pit ticket lines, pipelines, for example, this needs to exist in HubSpot. You need to update this 
even while you're mapping prior to import, right? Same with um, stage or um, ticket category, for example, all these things need to be customized. Even if you map it correctly here, you need to still go update your HubSpot. Now, regarding companies, there's a pro tip. If you're using HubSpot Insights, which is just a checkbox in your settings, a lot of this company information will be automatically populated based on domain name. So if you don't know their annual revenue or how many people work there, don't fret, it'll be populated automatically. Once you've determined your field mappings and then made those necessary updates and changes in your portal, it's time to get your CSV ready for import. This import template that's linked below is meant to be a guide for importing multiple objects. Anyone that's gone through this import process before will tell you the most challenging part is maintaining the associations between objects. Although associating contacts and companies is pretty easy based on email address and domain name, there's no way for HubSpot to understand that a certain deal, for example, should be associated with a particular contact and company. The easiest way to ensure all your records are connected is to insist on the relationship in each CSV row. So let me show you what I mean. Let me stay organized. I color coded company, contact, deal, and ticket fields. You'll see in this example that my import will create the company Looney Tunes upon import. The unique identifier for companies in HubSpot is that domain name. We'll continue using this value all the way down to make sure all the contacts, deals, and tickets that need to be associated with Looney Tunes is indeed connected. I'm also creating two contacts in this example and adding the info I already had um, for, my, for my old CRM, right? So you can see that Bugs Bunny and Tweety Bird are my two contacts that I'm importing from my old CRM. I had their job title, their persona. We're not utilizing lead status. Again, you delete anything you don't need. So I'm importing the information that I already had in my old CRM. You'll notice Bugs Bunny here is associated with a deal. Tweety, on the other hand, is associated with a ticket. What you're importing could look very different depending on the objects you're importing, the amount of data in the field you have, and how records are related to each other. No matter what your template ends up looking like, remember that associations require a separate row. So this company will go all the way down for every single contact, deal, and ticket that needs to be associated with that company. If you need a new row for Elmer Fudd and Daffy Duck and the Tasmanian, Devil, for example, you'll need to have separate Looney Tunes to denote the company. And then, of course, a new entry. Now I'm forgetting how to spell their names. Every time. Okay, so that's important. So for additional guidance, because this is a big bite to uh, break off, check out the Set Up Your Import Files KBA linked below. Once you've got your import file clean and ready to go, it's time to import. You can follow those very specific steps in the, follow, in the Import Records KBA linked below. As you can see, successfully migrating data into any CRM requires forethought and planning but spending some time cleansing your incoming data and customizing your HubSpot will ensure a smoother transition and increased data hygiene. Download the migration mapping matrix and multi-object import template link below for help. And if you enjoyed this video, check out our other HubSpot helper videos and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Need custom recommendations for your HubSpot portal? Check out our HubSpot action plan today.